uh, we've come to evening prayer for Wednesday and today the Church of England wants us to remember a guy called Ninian. Now, he's described as the Bishop of Galloway, Apostle uh, of the Picts. And we're looking at the 400s here. So, not an easy time to know anything about anyone. Scotland was divided into different language groups, different areas run by warlords. Uh, the population of Scotland was very differently configured to today. Nobody had founded Glasgow yet, for example. Now, Ninian came over from Ireland, which is visible from the bottom of the Scottish coastline there, and he set up devotional centres, we call them monasteries or oratories or different names depending upon exactly what status they had. But what he appears to have done, and again it's not easy to tell, is to proceed from places such as Whitton, which is near Newtonton Moor, uh, not far from that bottom left corner of Scotland as you look on the map and he travelled and planted churches possibly just small monastic communities that subsequently reached out um, into the area controlled by the Picts which is going to be central to eastern Scotland all the way up towards the Highlands but the Picts didn't really have a writing culture. And what we know of the Picts today is very much to do with the amazing stone carvings that they did. It's not to do with the written language. But what we do know is that this man was an absolute pioneer in the post-Roman period. And so we're giving really great thanks to God for him today because he brought Christianity to a significant section of uh, southern and eastern Scotland directly or through his disciples. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. One thing I have asked of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to seek him in his house of prayer. Wherever you are now, that is your house of prayer. Psalm 11 In the Lord have I taken refuge. How then can you say to me, Flee like a bird to the hills, for see how the wicked bend the bow and fit their arrows to the string, to shoot from the shadows at the true of heart. When the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try every mortal being. The Lord tries the righteous as well as the wicked, but those who delight in violence his soul abhors. Upon the wicked he shall rain coals of fire and burning sulphur. Scorching wind shall be their portion to drink. For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteous deeds. And those who are upright shall behold his face. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And so we come to our reading from Mark's Gospel, and it's chapter 10, beginning at verse 17. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up to Jesus and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, 
What must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honour your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these things since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions. And in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I bind unto myself the name, the strong name of the Trinity, by invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three, of whom all nature has creation, eternal Father, Spirit, Word. Praise to the Lord of my salvation. Salvation is of Christ the Lord. Great and wonderful are your deeds, Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O ruler of the nations. Who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord, for you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. We hold before God those who lead the nations, who have immense responsibility before God and human beings, whatever they have been, Lord, guide them to a better place, inform their decisions, and help them to bow the knee to you. We hope before God, those who are seeking to keep peace between nations, those who are looking for answers to bring the COVID-19 pandemic to an end. Those who are looking to promote health and education through developing countries and struggle to find those who will cooperate and live in peace with one another. 
we hold before God those who are brave enough to go into refugee situations and war zones and bring health, hope and a future. We hold before God those who have devoted themselves to bring the gospel of Jesus to nations in which they are as yet unwelcome. We hold before God those who are finding life a struggle because of unfair treatment, unjust criticism, unappreciated work, difficult temptations, difficult aspects to their own personality. Difficult memories, difficult living situations, health challenges, losses in relationships, those whose spirit is sick because of disappointment those who have failed to forgive. We hold those before the Lord who fall into all of these categories. We loose the peace of God, the presence of God, the wisdom of God, the love of God, the compassion of God, the glory of God. To bring all things into submission to Jesus. That love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control may abound through his church and out into the world. We hold before God the legacy of St Ninian and we pray that the Holy Spirit will move in power across Scotland for a new generation to turn to Christ and follow him first and foremost. In the name of Jesus our Saviour, in the power of the Holy Spirit, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you called your servant Ninian to preach the gospel to the people of Northern Britain. Raise up in this and every land heralds and evangelists of your kingdom, that your church may make known the ri your immeasurable riches that it can be found in your Son, Jesus Christ our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.